Hi guys, um, you are welcome to another course, another part of my class. It's Financial Accounting Made Simple by Sonyolu Ulua Femi Akintunde. And today we'll be looking at um, another course different from what uh, we've probably looked at before. So let's just jump right into the course without wasting any time. So like I always say, the cost approach is you just I understand sometimes you can be afraid of accounting because it requires you to calculate, think. But I promise you, accounting is not the same as math. With accounting, all you need, all the requirements you need is just simple arithmetic, that's addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Once you are able to uh, know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, the next thing you need to do is just know accounting formats and you'll be fine. In as much as you can go to the market and make a purchase and know exactly how much you have to pay for, uh, what you are paying for, then accounting is for you. All you need is just to be serious, be committed, and to have a positive attitude that you are going to succeed uh, in accounting. So let's jump right into it. Now for our learning objective, at the end of this particular course, I expect uh, that you would know the definition of non-current assets. So that means our topic for today will be discussing about non-current assets. And you know the different classes uh, of non-current assets that we have. Also, you'll be able to uh, determine the acquisition cost of an asset, or you'll be able to determine the acquisition cost of assets. So that's at the end of this, uh, at the end of this course, you should be able uh, to know all of this. So like I said before, um, this is module nine of our uh, lecture, and we are going to be discussing accounting for non-current assets. Now let's look at the definition of non-current assets. But before we look at uh, the definition of non-current assets, let's first of all look at what is an asset. What is an asset? Of course, we are familiar with assets once we hear the word asset, we, we refer to buildings, cars, uh, electronics, computers, we refer to things that we can see and that are tangible most of the time. Now, assets are the economic resources which an organization own or control and which are expected to derive some future Benefits. That's just the simple definition of an asset. They are resources that are owned or controlled by an organization with the expectation that they will produce future benefits. So when an organization buys a building, it is expected that in the future, they will be able to use that building to generate uh, returns. They will be able to use that building to generate revenue. Now, what is now a non-current asset? Simply put, a non-current asset, they are assets that last beyond one accounting period. That means in a calendar month, we have what, 12 months. So when we talk about one accounting period, we are referring to 12 months. So any asset that is bought that is expected to last for more than one accounting period is referred to as a non-current asset. So non-current assets, these are a company's assets that are expected to be used for more than one accounting period in the organization. Now it's expected that these assets are not uh, for the sale purpose. Now when we buy assets that are usually for the sale purpose, we don't call them non-current assets. We refer to them as inventory. And inventory will be classified under current assets because the inventory is expected to be used up as the organization carries out their daily activities. So any asset that is bought by an organization in order uh, for them to be able to use that asset for more than one accounting period, and that asset is capable of generating future benefits, that asset can be classified as a non-current asset. So non-current assets, uh, they are long-lived assets. We refer to them as long-lived assets or fixed assets. We used to call them fixed assets before IFRS. Um, so they are long-lived assets or fixed assets or long-term assets. They are 
like investments to the organization that lasts for more than one accounting period of time. Now, non-current assets, any assets that last beyond one year is what we refer to as non-current assets. Why any asset that we, is used up within a year? So if you use up that asset within six months, within eight months, within nine months, within 11 months, we refer to those type of assets as current assets. But any asset that lasts beyond one accounting period are regarded as non-current assets. Now, non-current assets will normally come under the heading of statement of financial position. You can remember when I taught you final accounts, when we did final accounts, um, you know we have different headings under final accounts. So under our final accounts, you have, usually you have in a typical final accounts, we have uh, the statement of financial position, you have the comprehensive income statement, you have the statement of cash flow, and the statement of changes in equity. But what we are really talking about now is the statement of financial position. Now, in the statement of financial position, you normally find your non-correct assets in form of either an investment, investment that lasts for more than one accounting period of time, or you can find it under property plant and equipment. These are physical assets that you are familiar with, such as uh, buildings, cars, land, and the, and the likes. Then we can then talk about intangible assets. Of course, we are going to be breaking this down as we go into this particular course. For intangible assets, just know that intangible assets are assets that have value, but this asset cannot be seen, touched, or felt. Then we now have other classes of assets. Now let's look at examples of non-current assets. What are the examples of non-current assets that we have? The first one you have, if you have investments in another corporation. So if, for example, as an organization, we decide to buy an investment in a bank, we decide to buy stocks in a bank or shares in a bank, that is an investment. So that can be classified as an asset because in uh, in time, we may need to what redeem that our stock, we may need to redeem that our shares, and that becomes um, a higher value for us in the long run. Also, we can talk about land. When you buy a land, of course, you know land appreciates normally. So when you buy a land, the land is supposed to be an investment because it's going to give you, you're going to derive future benefits from that particular land. Then we have buildings, equipment, furniture motor vehicle, plant and machinery. You have copyright. Copyright is a type of non-current, is a type of non-current asset that is intangible. So also is goodwill, patent rights, and trademarks. All these are uh, intangible non-current assets because we cannot see them, but they add value to the organization. And let us look at the classification of non-current assets. So before now, if you have been listening to me closely, you will have heard that I said uh, we have tangible assets and intangible assets. Now let us distinguish between uh, the tangible assets and the intangible assets. Now what are tangible assets? Tangible assets are assets that can be physically seen, felt, or touched. So for example, you can see a building, you can touch the building, and you can also uh, fill the building. That is that is it. So the same thing too with motor vehicles, with equipment, with uh, furniture and fittings. So you can see them, you can touch them, you can feel them. All these chairs, tables, they are all um, tangible asset because they can be seen, felt, and touched. Now the intangible asset. These are in, these are asset that cannot be physically seen touch or felt, but they add value to the organization. So they are not physically seen, felt, or touched, but they can add value to the organization. So for example, we have patent rights. Now, patent right is a right given to an inventor in order for him to enjoy that invention for a period of time. That means for that inventor, he will be given time to enjoy his invention. No other person can copy that particular invention 
in that period of time in which he has been given the patent right. So patent right is usually given for an invention. Copyright is usually given for books, for texts. Why trademarks for brands? And you can then have goodwill. Goodwill is the good name that a company enjoys. For example, there are some companies that have been on the surface of Earth for as long as you can remember. So for example, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, uh, oil companies such as Shell, Chevron, they've been around for a very long time. Pepsi, all these are brands that have been around for a very long time and they have been able to sustain their name. They have good names. So we call that goodwill. Now let us look at the acquisition cost of non-current assets. Now, what do we mean by acquisition cost of non-current assets? Let me just make this very simple. When we talk about acquisition cost, acquisition means to buy or to acquire, to buy or to acquire. Now, when you buy an asset, it is not only the cost of that asset that is capitalized that will appear in your statement of financial position. Now, it is going to be the cost of the asset as well as any other additional cost that I have used in putting that asset to use. Let me repeat that again. So if I buy a car for one million and I do refurbishing of the car, I decide to change the headlights, I decide to change the seats from uh, cotton seat to leather seat, I decide to make some adjustments put alloy rims. Now, all the costs that I've incurred in putting that car together will be capitalized alongside the initial 1 million naira that I paid for that car. That is what we call acquisition cost. So acquisition cost of an asset include the purchase price and all expenditure needed to put that asset to use. So for example, for a property plant and equipment, the acquisition cost will include the, the amount that was paid on the property plant and equipment and any other expenditure that is incurred in order to put that property plant and equipment to use. For example, if I buy uh, a, an AC, if I buy an AC, now what will happen is if I buy an AC for 30,000, and I call the electrician, the electrician charges me 5,000. And also he has said that he's going to have to drill the wall and that is going to cost an extra 5,000 to get the accessories to do, to put, to install the AC. At the end of the day, I will have spent 40,000. The 30,000 I paid uh, with regards to the AC unit, the 5,000 that I'm going to pay for the labor as well as the 5,000 that I'm going to use to acquire uh, the accessories that will put the AC to use. If I have a transportation cost that has been included, I'm also going to add it to any other cost that is used in putting that asset to use. So also, if you buy a building, so the purchase price of that building, or if you are building uh, a house, the cost of that building, the cost of whoever the architectural uh, designer that helped you in designing that building, the cost of the land, the cost of the permits, the cost of any cost that is used that was incurred in the process of building that particular house will be capitalized and it will be regarded as acquisition cost. Also, in relation to an equipment, I think I've given an example in relation to an equipment that if I buy an AC, the cost, any cost that is in use to uh, put the assets to use, including modification of the building. That is, if we have to drill the walls in order to fit in the AC, it's going to be capitalized also. Then for land, any cost that is used uh, in putting the land to use. So for example, the purchase price of the land, uh, real estate commission that has been paid in respect to the land, title of land, legal expenses, transfer uh, fees, any amount that is related to that particular land will be regarded as part of the acquisition cost. So let's look at this particular example, acquisition cost of illustration. Sinking Ship Limited purchased a new land for their new outlet in Lagos for 4 million Naira. On, on 14th of May, 
2022. However, Sinking Ship Limited paid title fee of 100,000 100, Naira, survey fee of 50,000, legal fee of 30,000, and real estate commission of 20,000. What is the acquisition cost of the land? I've told you the acquisition cost of the land is any cost that is used uh, in purchasing the land and putting the land to use. So we're going to add uh, the cost of the land, the title fee, the surveying fee, the legal fee, the real estate commission. And at the end of the day, our acquisition cost will be 4.2 million. Easy peasy, very easy to understand. <clears throat> so that's that. So here is your assignment. Um, you have to do this as an assignment. The cost is very, very short. Uh, I want to believe you understand everything that I've said. So if you understand everything I've said, you should uh, be able to solve these assignments. So you have to apply three important, uh, three important costs that may be associated with uh, the purchase of a new equipment. So you can identify those costs that can be used in the purchase of an equipment. Now let's look at this second uh, assignment too. The company purchased a new machine for $500,000 and the, machine, the machine's test run was carried out to make sure that the machine works properly. There was a cost of 5,000 incurred on the test run. However, the sales proceed from the machine during the test uh, process was 2,000. What is the acquisition cost of the machine? So this will get you to think a bit but I want to believe if you understand everything that I've said, this shouldn't be a problem. So like I told you, uh, this is my wife result. You can see uh, in all my courses, I normally put it there just to try to encourage you to show you that accounting can be very easy. If I can go from having F9 uh, to, to, to having a first class, that shows that uh, there's so much you can learn regardless of your background and you can do this. Failure is the ability to start again more intelligently. So if you have probably failed account before or mass before, trust me, accounting is very, very easy. And the mindset you have is what distinguishes you from others. So your mindset is the difference between ordinary and extraordinary people. And like I told you at the beginning, you need to practice. Numbers don't lie. It only shows pattern. So if you study for 30 minutes every day, if you practice for 10, and somebody else practices uh, for three hours every day, the results would always show. So you can reach me on any of these social media platforms if you have any uh, questions or suggestions. Thank you very much for listening. Um, it is Sanyolu Olua Femi, and uh, I'll see you on the other side of the course. Hopefully by then you should be able uh, you should be able to have learned one or two things from this uh, course. Accounting